So, uh, hi, my name is Emil Vasev. I'm a research fellow at NIRU, Direct Software Genetic Research Center uh, at the University of Limerick, Ireland. This presentation uh, will be on uh, our research work on modeling the image processing behavior on uh, the NASA Voyager mission with uh, SSL. SSL stands for Runic System Specification Language. And uh, it was initially developed at Concordia University in Montreal, Canada. Actually, it's the result of my PhD studies there. I graduated this university in 2008. So, uh, the talk will start with a short introduction to the problem domain, followed by a short retrospection of the Voyager mission and, uh, few, and uh, a few comments on our research objectives. <clears throat> Next, I'll present briefly the autonomous specification language and then I'll talk in more detail about the model we built with SSO for the Voyager mission. And finally, there will be a slide, there will be a few slides on uh, the discussion, future work and benefits. So basically, the autonomic computing paradigm appeared to be a very nice solution to the problem of software complexity. Autonomic computing was initially announced uh, uh, back in 2001 when Paul Horn and chief scientist at IBM actually linked uh, computer systems to um, the autonomic um, nervous system in a, a human body, presuming that actually computer systems can uh, self-manage in the way how the human bodies do. And uh, basically, an autonomic computing uh, system, uh, well, is providing kind of self-adaptive behavior, and it uh, is capable of self-management. And this help, uh, and it, it's built on top of uh, self-contained autonomic elements, which are kind of uh, architectural components, and at the same time, uh, uh, intelligent agents able to communicate with each other and also to organize and be orchestrated to perform uh, common uh, actions and pursue uh, common objectives. So basically, uh, NASA, ESA, and other organizations embarking on computing, presuming that this paradigm can help them build uh, unmanned spacecraft, which are very useful for uh, deep space exploration. And there are a few examples of this, like uh, the autonomous nanotechnology swarm mission, the Deep Space Swarm mission, and all other examples coming from ESA, like uh, uh, ExoMars, like uh, uh, BB Colombo, and so on. <clears throat> well, actually, with this research work, we're targeting at something like autonomic computing based border like missions, where our principal goal is to investigate hypotheses about the design implementation of uh, possible future border like missions based on and implementing actually autonomic computing features. Uh, actually, what we do, we, we build prototype prototypes. So we build uh, prototype software models of the Voyager mission, and uh, which helps to compare features and issues of the actual Voyager mission with possible virtual autonomic approaches to that mission. And uh, uh, this actually brings a lot of significant benefits to the development of future space exploration missions because you can compare both and you see the advantages and disadvantages of these uh, prototype models. And we use SSL for that, autonomic specification language. The language itself um, is, uh, is formal. It has formal semantics, but also because it's formal method, it provides both notation and, and a tool set. So we can partially validate the specification models and generate uh, Java code uh, from these models. So the Voyager mission itself uh, appeared to be maybe the most successful example of a space mission ever. So the factors of success lay mainly in the rigorous spacecraft design and implementation 
and also in the facts that uh, the, the space car hardware was designed to allow for enhanced remote control programming and last but not least uh, the fact that actually the don some kind of autonomous behavior uh, persisted in the Borgia requirements, like for example taking pictures, uh, it's fully autonomous. Well, uh, one of the term objectives with this research are to model and implement with SSL autonomous system prototypes of Borgia-like missions and then perform some kind of benchmark experiments uh, and validate uh, features and questions and perform further investigations based on the practical results and based on actually dissimulated conditions. Our first objective was to specify with SSL and generate a prototype model for image processing behavior observed in the Voyager mission and that's the, the thought I'm presenting today. Uh, well, you should know that uh, Voyager uh, has kind of even driven behavior, both spacecraft are able to detect space objects and take pictures on the fly, which is which makes the mission very convenient for SSL needs. Well, the SSL specification model um, has kind of a hierarchical structure. It, it, it's kind of a multi-tier specification model where actually the software engineers may specify an autonomic system at uh, three different levels of abstraction. The first level is the autonomic system level. Actually, this is the global view of the system. So there uh, you deal with uh, uh, global characteristics of the system, like the system objectives, like uh, something very important, self-management policies, uh, go, uh, the architecture uh, topology of the system, global actions, events, metrics. At the second level of abstraction, actually, uh, uh, we specify um, a means of communication within the system and also communication that the system may, may use to talk to external uh, uh, entities. Uh, so it's kind of uh, interaction protocol and uh, we specify messages, um, special channels, communication functions and finally at the third level of abstraction we specify the autonomic elements of the system itself. So an autonomic element as I mentioned is a self-contained element. It has its own behavior and 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 this behavior actually uh, follows some special self-management policies on turn time. Uh, so there are most, most of their like recovery protocols, behavior models and so on, which are of the scope of this talk. So basically to specify with SSL, you need to specify these three tiers. And no, there are a lot of details there, so you don't really have to think about all these things when you specify an, a model with us. So what you should know is, uh, uh, is uh, you should actually concentrate on the self-management policies. So the whole model is centered around uh, these self-management policies, which actually provide the autonomic computing behavior uh, of the system in question. Uh, <clears throat> Well, a complete specification can be uh, validated with a built-in consensus check checking tool, and then we can actually generate a prototype model. So that's what we we did uh, uh, with the Verger actually prototype. Uh, so basically, the generated prototypes are fully operational. They're multi-thread, even during applications. They're Java applications with embedded messaging. So what you see here is a very simple uh, uh, self-management policies is actually self-healing. So basically, when you specify self-management policies, we we uh, we uh, specify special states which are defined as fluents that can be initiated by events or terminated by uh, other events, and also we say exactly when this state is active, for example, when a fluent is initiated, uh, what the system must do. So it's like performing a sequence of actions. And uh, so we map certain fluents to certain actions. So that's how the policy is pursuing uh, 
is performing some um, activity or actually realizing actions in the environment. Uh, so this is uh, the behavior we specified with us. So actually, it starts with the Voyager spacecraft. Voyager 2 spacecraft. Well, it basically it uses its cameras uh, to monitor space objects. Then they, it takes pictures and notifies so it, uh, uh, that an, an image transition is about to start. Basically, if you don't know, all the pictures uh, taken by Voyager were sent to the Earth pixel by pixel. So, and that's why we need this kind of image transmission, uh, pixel by, by pixel. And uh, on board, actually, Voyager applies some filters uh, <clears throat> and, and sends streams of pixel toward. And when the, the, the session is over, it notifies actually the antennas on Earth that uh, the session is over. At the same time, antennas on Earth, actually, there are four antennas on Earth distributed among different countries. Uh, uh, they're prompted to receive these uh, uh, pixels, actually, and they start receiving the pixels, and they also can, uh, they also, actually, along with the pixels, they can receive a message that the session is over, so they know that the message is over, and then they, they send the collected images, maybe they're partial because there's a lot of noise, to the uh, Voyager mission based on Earth, where actually the whole this thing is merged together and we get actually the real pictures taken by the Voyager spacecraft. Um, so, for this model, we specified Voyager three main SSO tiers, the one that we uh, just saw, actually the autonomic system tier, the, the protocol tier, and the autonomic element tier. So, we specified Self-management uh, self policy. You see, actually, uh, some fragments of this specification model, uh, and uh, this policy was realized actually for the Voyager uh, spacecraft is itself, and for the antennas on Earth. And um, uh, basically, the whole autonomic behavior is a combination of. Uh, the performance of this policy actually at the global level of the system at, and on the individual level of each one of these autonomic element, elements, the, the spacecraft and the antennas or not. So, what you see here are a few snippets, actually SSL snippets from the image processing behavior for image processing self-management policy uh, specified at uh, the, the global level, at the autonomic system tier level. Um, uh, the whole specification model is quite long. It's over 1,200 lines of SSL code. It's been added to the white paper I submitted to this workshop. Uh, again, uh, basically, you can see fluence here. Defining, well, that's that's a partial specification, but anyway, defining some of the uh, states, uh, for example, uh, in uh, of the global, uh, global states of the system. And you can see an action that can be performed, for example, when uh, this is global action, again, it can be, it can uh, uh, require orchestration, at least it can um, involve multiple autonomic elements. Uh, and uh, you can also see an event here. This event actually is activated when a message is received and so on. So, this is actually a uh, partial view of the specification uh, uh, of this policy, image processing self-management policy, but this time at the level of uh, at the autonomic element level. Actually, this is the specification of this policy for the Voyager autonomic element. Uh, again, we have fluence here, we have events, local events actually, and this is very important here, something I, I haven't seen. Any, uh, uh, I didn't say anything so far about it. It's it's a metric specification concept. Actually, uh, with metric, when we specify metrics, we say how the system should listen to the environment and how the system should listen to events internal uh, to the system itself. And uh, also, via metrics, we can control, for example, different pieces of hardware and software. And uh, 
for example, this particular metric is, is specified to detect changes in uh, well to to detect changes in the environment in the sp in, uh, in the space outside surrounding the the, the spacecraft. Uh, <clears throat> It uses uh, a special managed element. It's another construct, as a construct, where actually we connect uh, this metric uh, uh, to the software, to the driver controlling the camera uh, via interface functions like take pictures and so on. So there are m many like this one, but you can see them here in this little snippet. Uh, so now we go to the second actually to the third specification level, the antennas. Uh, again, it's a partial specification and again we specified set of fluence, set of actions, events and so on. So basically the whole this thing must be orchestrated and when you specify uh, the image processing uh, uh, <clears throat> policy at the level of the different anatomic elements, we actually should uh, synchronize this policy with the global policy that actually orchestrates all these uh, individual uh, sessions, if I can say so, of the policy execution performance happening at the local level of each one of these economic elements. So when we generate a code, as I mentioned, from the specification model, we can generate a code. Actually, it's, it's a fully uh, operational code. So it's Java code, so we can uh, execute this code. And, but it's important to know that it's a highly granular code. So the specification model itself is replicated uh, uh, at, uh, well in this implementation. So we have uh, uh, each tier presented as a single object there, and the objects talk to each other. Mainly, well, when it, when we talk about the different autonomic elements, they use the uh, interaction protocol, but also they talk to the autonomic system object and so on. And for each autonomic element, it's very, it's, there is something interesting. Actually, this, the, the the framework, that cell framework, generates uh, an internal control loop, which allows uh, a, an autonomic element to monitor, actually analyze, schedule, and execute. Uh, so when it monitors, actually, it listens to the environment or to the internal events via these metrics. And then actually it analyzes the results uh, obtained from the, by, uh, by these metrics and it schedules policies for execution and executes them. So this is the purpose of this control loop here. I don't know if you can see the pointer. I'm not really sure about it. You should look at uh, the second diagram. It's B. So uh, when you run a model generated with SSL, actually uh, we see log records. So basically, these log records, these log records uh, uh, demonstrate the different state transitions happening in the system while operating. So basically, we can detect when events uh, uh, has when events have occurred in the system, when some fluence uh, were initiated or terminated, where some actions were uh, performed, um, and and so on. So basically, we can uh, trace the whole uh, uh, execution of the system, and and we can evaluate based on these log records the performance. So that's actually helped us to uh, conclude that actually the model itself operated according to our expectations. But it's important to know that actually this was a very simple model. I mean, it, the image processing it, uh, model we, we built uh, and uh, with SSL actually copied the Voyager mission itself. So we did not extend this model with any uh, uh, new features. I mean, so basically the prototype itself abstracted most of the spacecraft components. Uh, but the next prototype models will specify other components like spacecraft radio, like antenna, like uh, all the, uh, the two cameras as distinct managed elements because now we have, we, we considered only one of the cameras, narrow angle camera. And uh, this will help us to evaluate their, their performance 
uh, uh, about these special metrics I, I mentioned before yeah, and events. And also, we are planning to come up with uh, uh, other self management features like remote assistance, self heating, onboard self heating. And there are more actually uh, on that, uh, like. We're, because we're we are developing these prototypes in a stepwise manner. I mean, we're we're developing feature based feature. So uh, it, the more feature we add, actually, the more dynamic systems we get at the end. So uh, new features can be added, like uh, I mentioned, self healing, like self protecting, self adapting, and other self adapting policies. Um, and our ultimate goal is to eventually construct an integer virtual like system able to react to different hazards in space and to find uh, possible solutions by applying onboard uh, intelligence with non human interaction. Um, and, well, a part of this work is a model check mechanism we are working on. Uh, well, so far, all these models can be actually. Uh, uh, model check if I can say so very low level it's consistency level plus we have some em embedded rules uh, that actually check for uh, validity of the system in terms of some uh, autonomic computing requirements for example you cannot have an autonomic system uh, where the self management policies actually contradict each other so this is embedded in this uh, uh, <coughs> consistency checker, but the real model checker is not uh, developed yet, and this is one of uh, the ongoing projects. Um, and this is the last slide. It says uh, a few words about the benefits for space systems. Actually, it's very nice when you have the system itself and you have prototypes of so this system, prototypes targeting, let's say, flaws of the system, and at the same time, uh, targeting, let's say, uh, well, taking into consideration uh, the problems we ha we encountered with the system, and well, the ultimate goal is to improve uh, and design, let's say, similar systems, but uh, better performing, for example, and also, well, uh, by having this prototype capabilities, you can easily build, uh, let's say, and this and uh, build many, many uh, uh, systems, well, systems uh, implementing autonomic features and compare them. You can benchmark them and do, do certain analysis and evaluate what, for example, autonomic features can be necessary, uh, well, what can be, let's say, just desirable and so on. So you can actually graduate and you can. Uh, put this autonomic features in some certain hierarchical model by importance and so on. And uh, basically this is my last slide. So if you have any questions. Once again, press star one to ask questions. It's as itself. The language is called autonomic system specification language. Yeah, it's dedicated to autonomic systems. Actually, uh, I said this at the beginning. Maybe you missed this, but uh, it's been developed by myself back in 2008. As a result, actually, is the result of my PhD studies at Temple University, in Montreal. The picture the resolution. Uh, if I remember exactly, it was well. There two. There were two resolutions. There two. There were two cameras. The high resolution camera was six uh, six forty by eight hundred. If, if I'm, but that's. You can read this uh, in the technical specification of the version anyway. So we, we copied the same uh, spe specifics. I mean, we didn't, we did not 
we did not change that. But our prototypes are uh, software prototypes, so we can set up whatever resolution we like. Well, you can multiply 640 by 8 to not even see the number of pixels sent. Even I, if I'm not wrong, the pictures sent were more because there were bits for the color and so on. I mean, on board, actually, Borger applied uh, some filters. So actually, any pixel maybe was sent three times at least, for example. To come up with different, so basically the pictures taken by Borger were color pictures. So there are uh, you know, why the my question is why the AFML language or you know, there are other specification languages, other uh, model fabrics. I'm sure that there's some significance there. That... Well, this this work itself is, is well is if I can say so is uh, is three year or four year old work. Uh, but at that time, it was very important for my work. I mean to prove. It was kind of well one of most one of all these uh, I can say uh, concept proof examples. All the examples we use were related to the ANT system, uh, almost all technologies one, mission system. So basically, that was the main reason. And also, there are many platforms for specifying systems, as you mentioned. However, this uh, platform. Uh, at that time, 2008, was maybe the, the, uh, the most developed platform. I actually was fully dedicated to autonomic computing features, to autonomic computing itself. And there were no other platforms allow, I mean, helping, allowing such features like, I mean, the, uh, emphasizing exactly the autonomic features. Although in this first example, uh, exercise, we do not really have real autonomic features. Actually, we succeed to implement the system itself, and then we, we plan to add features that will help the system, let's say, be self healing for example. Are there any other questions in the room? Yeah, I guess since Voyager is a system that's been developed many years ago, obviously, you've never loaded in Java, so if you're replicating the functionality that they would have had back then. Right. I assume in this language and coming up with would be applicable to say our tire tracks or something that's gonna be going up and you can use the same techniques to do that. That's something to maybe able to look at. Right. Because of course code that like this language uh like is there any tools that you have available or anything that you might be able to help us do that kind of work at the phone one? Of course, yeah, it's still academic. But I mean there are flaws like for example, the help system and so on, but it's fully functional, yes. I mean, in terms of IP, maybe, I know I have to discuss this with uh, Euro, for example, or maybe some parts of Concordia, but I don't see any reason why you cannot use this tool. Anything else in the room? Did I answer your question, actually? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I was a bit general, but now I have to see what you're saying. I was just thinking, Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. But you specify. I mean, it's a different story. You don't really encode. I mean, with 1,000 lines of code, you can generate 25,000 lines of Java code. Right. So it's 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 different story. I mean, this C4, the whole specification model was built for one week, for example. And you get. I can provide you both. I mean, I can give you the the, the, the Java specification, the, the SSL specification model, and the Java code, and you can see the difference. 
you can run the code right away. Well, of course, you should, you still have to, let's say, replace some of the drivers generated by SSL. I mean, if you want to have a real, let's say, a prototype model, you can connect this, for example, prototype to some pieces of color if you like. But otherwise, it's pretty operational. I mean, you run it right away. Of course, it depends a lot on what you specify, but again, as I mentioned, you should emphasize the, the, the self object, the self management uh, policies there, and the whole specification activity goes around this. And the results are actually quite clear. Are there any uh, questions on the phone? Once again, to ask the question, you may press star one. Our next question comes from Mary. Hi, it's Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. I, uh, just a, a quick uh, value to add here, and I just see a tie into an earlier presentation. Um, by moving incrementally, the feature by feature, and doing the benchmark, you're catching those design flaws early, which I, I think is a value add because you're adding significant um, savings to the overall cost of what you're doing. I mean, some might do that, taking that approach costs a little bit more, but once you hit even just one of the flaws, I mean, the savings is so significant, catching it early on does make a big, big difference. I just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. What was the question? Uh, no question, just okay, comment. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I, I like your incremental approach because yes. you're catching those design flaws early. Yeah, basic does the beauty. Actually, you can easily come up with something more enhanced in terms of features. And with a single push, actually, bottom push, you can generate your new model, your new implementation and compare with well again analyzing the, the lock records compared with the previous one and see differences yeah. it saves yeah. a lot of time and resources yes it does save resources yeah. Marie. thank you mary are thank there, you thank you are there any other questions on the phone no other questions thank you anything else in the room and I don't have anything online. So uh, thank you very much.